What is up, guys? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome to the Medved Moose Guide. We're doing it. We're doing it finally. We're going to talk about grinding Medved Tega for a great one moose. A lot of you guys have been asking for this guide. There are a lot of specific uh, scenarios and questions that you guys have in the streams. I'm going to go over everything that I can in this video to make it as easy for you guys to get out there and start a grind. It's actually a lot easier than you guys think, and we're going to talk about everything in this video. If you guys enjoy it, don't forget to drop a like on it. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. We're on the road to 40,000 subscribers. We're getting close. Thank you guys so much for watching, but let's just get right into the video. All right, first things first, let's talk about loadout. Now, what weapons can we use to grind moose? There's a f only really a few that they're, you know, that are really actually uh, viable for a moose grind with the main one. And I talk about it a lot. The main one, guys, that you're going to want for grinding the moose is the 300. Now, you're not going to have the 300 unless you've got the Yukon Valley DLC and 75,000 cash. It is expensive in game to get and you have to have Yukon Valley to unlock it. So a lot of you guys might not have it. Now, luckily, there are some other some other guns some other options that you can use. None of them are as good as the 300, but there are a few other things that you can use. Now let's talk about the 338. A lot of you guys ask if the 338 is a viable option for grinding the moose. And the thing with grinding is you typically want a gun that's got more than one round, four or five rounds, ideally for grinding before you have to reload the weapon, which kind of takes the 338 and the seven mil out of the equation, right? Because both guns, one round, then you got to reload. So that's going to slow you down a lot. You're only going to be able to shoot one moose in a herd at a time and then go from zone to zone with only shooting one in, in each herd. So that's really not going to be the best option for grinding. But there are a couple other things that you could use. You could use the 308. The 308 is pretty good, pretty good penetration uh, for moose. Not bad. You don't you won't want to be taking super long shots, but you can definitely do it. Okay, so the 308, you get this in the AR, the Modern Rifles weapon pack with the other the other ARs, right? You get the 22, you get the 223, and you get the 308 uh, AR rifles. So that's a good option. Another good option is the M1, you guys. Okay, 30 odd six, really good penetration as well. I believe I believe it's got 30, 40, 45 penetration. Let's take a quick look. So, with the 308, you've got 44 penetration, and then the 30 odd six, you got 45. So those are going to be your two best options other than the 300. Okay, 308 polymer tips, 30 odd six polymer tips. If you don't have either of those, also the M1, that M1 uh, Garand is in the Smoking Barrels Weapon Pack, okay? So if you don't have that, you might have the other 30-06, right? Which is the, the Eckers right here, okay? That's another option that you could use. I believe this one has four rounds before reloading. This is another option too. You can use 30-06 on the moose if you have to. If it's the only thing that you have, you could use the 308. You could use the 300. Uh, if you've only got like the 7 mil, you could do it. Like I said, you're only going to be shooting one round before you got to reload, but if that's all you got, you could do it. You could start a grind with the 7 mil or the 338 as well. So you've got some options um, to get you started in the grind. Other things to focus on with the loadout, I like to have the moose collar, of course. Sometimes it does come in handy. So if you've got the moose collar, use it. You can use the Hyperion or the Argus on your rifles, you guys. It's totally up to you. This is totally based on preference. The Argus zooms in further. The Hyperion doesn't zoom in as far. Uh, just depends on what, what one you're more comfortable with. I never touch the Argus. I use the Hyperion even for the furthest shots in the game, but that's just me. Totally up to you guys. Get the moose collar, okay? I like to have my dog with me. Lately, that's a, a change that I've made. I have started taking the dog out because the way that the moose uh, spook now is very uh, erratic, the direction that they go. Even when they get uh, vital, they go a lot further than they used to a lot of the time. So I would recommend having the dog if you have the dog in the game, if you've got the DLC, it is going to come in handy, especially if you're, you know, not super experienced in the game. Maybe you're not hitting vitals every time. It does come in really handy to have that dog to track down the blood and find your kills. Uh, first aid kits you can carry on if you got room. As you can see, I don't. It's all good. I've got the Apex View binoculars. Uh, these have the built-in range finder. These are unlocked at around level 30 in the game. If you don't have them, you can just take your, your range finder and your, your old school vantage binoculars, whatever you have. Right, and then you're gonna want tents and tripods. We're gonna go more into that as we start more, talking about more things in the grind here. But as far as loadout, that's all you need. Uh, pretty basic, nothing too, too fancy. All right, so the next thing I wanna talk about you guys is hotspots, and let's take a little look at the map here. Now, the thing with the moose on Medved, I talk about it a lot. The moose are everywhere there's water, okay? And they are on most maps. Other than Leighton Lakes, every map for moose, 
they're going to be everywhere there's water. You're going to want to be very, very thorough. I'm going to throw my uh, hotspot map down to the bottom right of the map here because I want to show you guys some stuff uh, on the map. But the hotspot map is available in the Discord, just like all of my hotspot maps. They're all in the Discord. You can download them totally for free. Use them as a reference as you're grinding. Um, so, yeah, join the Discord if you haven't already. And the link is down below in the description. But basically, yeah, the whole map, as you guys can see on the hotspot map, they're everywhere. They're everywhere. Everywhere there's water. Uh, the hidden lakes are shown down there, circled in yellow. There are five hidden lakes. They can be at all five of those as well. You want to check everywhere. The only place that I haven't seen moose being is these four lakes in the mountains. Okay, but you guys might have them. I don't know if that means they can't go there. I've never seen them here on my map, but it doesn't mean that they for sure can't go there. So you're going to want to check those as well. But everywhere else, you got to check. You got to run the whole shore up in the north all the way around come all the way down all the way through here all the way down there i've got zones uh the river is massive for moose zones they're all the way along all the way down to the bottom you're gonna have zones going off right off the map here i've got zones that go right off the map uh it's pretty wild uh so you want to go all the way to the right up here um tent placement this is the way i've got my tents set up okay um, this is basically just the way that I've done it that gets me to kind of all of the areas of the map that I need to get to. You can kind of copy that if you need to. You know, as you're finding your zones, you're going to kind of get a feel for where you're going to want your tents to be. A couple of spots that I will point out that work really well is this spot right here. You can get to all three of these lakes and it's far enough away, I find, that you won't be spooking moose traveling to this tent. It's about 250 away from all of the lakes and that is the magic number you guys for your tents you want to keep your tents at least 250 meters away from zones where you're going to be spooking moose okay that's the magic number so you can kind of place uh, a waypoint and then uh, you can go back into your game you can see how far away you are from that waypoint and use that uh, as a reference point, okay, when you're placing your tents. And that's all there is really to it. My tripods, I try to keep the tripods uh, at least 150 away from the zones, okay? 150 away from the closest moose. It tends, tends to work just fine. I haven't had any problem from 150. So 150 for your tripods, 250 for your tents. This is another really good tent spot. Gets you to these three lakes and it's far enough away. You know, use your, use your zones as a reference. Make sure you're not too close. And, uh, and, and place your tents accordingly. This is a good one for these two lakes. Uh, this is a good one for these two. So it's all about strategizing when it comes to the tents. It comes to The tripods is a little bit easier because you can place 32 tripods, right? Tents, uh, you, you only got 16 for the tents. It can get a little bit tricky trying to figure out, you know, the best spots that you're going to pick. I've got one for this hidden lake down here. Uh, I've got one over here because this one's quite far away from that outpost. And uh, this one for these two. Bolshoi is great. It's got an outpost right beside it. This is a huge hotspot for a lot of different species, but moose are, moose are all around. So yeah, pretty much they're just kind of everywhere. Check all of the water. Be very thorough. Your map is going to be a little bit different than anybody else's, uh, and they can be anywhere that there is water. So it's moose drink time right now. They drink from 12 to 16. I like to set the time for anywhere from 12 30 to 13 30 they do tend to come in a little bit late actually the further i've gotten into this grind they seem to be coming in later and later so i've been setting the time for like 13 30 and then getting started and hunting until about 15 30 1600 uh, and then doing a time reset i follow a rotation and i can't stress enough you guys start in one spot and and figure out a way that you want to do your rotation Okay, so like I start at Bolshoi, I do it a little bit weird. I do Bolshoi and then I work my way around all of these lakes and down and I make my way down into the south and then I go up into the North Shore. I check all of this. I go down my river here and then I jump up top and I do this and I work my lakes here from the north to the south. I've got a couple zones in the crater I need to point out to you guys. They can be down there as well. You want to be checking there as well. Uh, but yeah, you want to follow rotation. And the main reason for this is not only to build up that muscle memory so that you you know, you can just kind of go through your zones, go through your lakes without thinking too much. You know, it keeps you from getting too chaotic, forgetting if you've checked certain lakes, right? There's so many places to check. So that's going to keep you doing it in a way that is systematic. Uh, the muscle memory will, will kick in, right? And you'll just get used to going through your rotation the same way every time. It's going to make things easier. It's going to make things quicker the more times you do it. But also the main thing is with this, your hunting practice Pressure is going to follow you okay so I know just by looking at where my hunting pressure is where I left off so I left off at the bottom of the river now I know that I need to check here next and then I'm gonna check all my lakes north to south so the hunting pressure will follow you around so it's you're never gonna be hunting somewhere 
where there's hunting pressure. It's going to be following behind you. And by the time you get back to where you started, it's like a snake that follows you around the map right behind you. It's never going to be where you're hunting. So you're never going to have to worry about uh, hunting pressure being in places that you're shooting the moose. You're never going to have to worry about deleting zones, right? And deleting zones, we should talk about that as well. Deleting zones, the way that it works. So hunting pressure will delete a zone. If you're shooting without a tripod, you guys, okay? If I'm shooting at this zone, say this is a moose zone, it is a moose zone. Okay, say I've got three moose there that I want to shoot. I shoot all three. That is the maximum amount of hunting pressure I can have over top of a zone without deleting it. If I shoot one more animal there, this zone is going to be deleted. It's going to be gone. It's either going to repopulate here. It's going to respawn just like an animal would. OK, it's either going to respawn here or it's going to respawn somewhere else on the map. OK, so you don't want to really delete your zones unless you're trying to do that on purpose. For some reason, you don't want to do it. So tripods help a lot with tripods. You can shoot something like 16 animals uh, over top of a zone without deleting it. It's way, way less hunting pressure shooting from a tree stand or a tripod or a blind than it is uh, just shooting from the ground without any kind of uh, hunting structure. So that's why the tripods come in so handy. I haven't placed all my tripods. As you can see, there's not a ton uh, placed. I'm just still kind of doing that on my grind. I finally got my tents where I want them. And now I'm going to start focusing on tripods. I don't place the tents right away. You guys, I do a few runs all the way through every zone because I don't know where I'm going to want to put those 16 tents. I've only got 16. If I start placing my tents around before I have all my zones, I'm going to find that, okay, now I got to move some around because I've got all these zones that I didn't even know I had, and I'm going to want to put tents down for them as well. So I do a few runs checking everything uh, without really placing tents, unless I know for sure I'm going to need one there, like for, you know, for this leg, I get there, I've got a couple zones. Okay. I'm going to probably want a tent there. So I'll, I'll place that just because it is so far to run. Same with the North shore. It's good to have a tent up here just to get you there because right Running from here is actually quite far. It takes quite long. But as far as like the specific tents for where you're going to want them for certain lakes and stuff, you're going to want to be checking first, right? I'm obviously I'm not going to want a tent here. I'm not going to need a tent there if I don't have any zones here, but I've got three moose zones here. So I know I need that tent there. So let's hit a couple of these lakes. I want to talk about some specific, a little bit more specific things. A lot of you guys ask about the solo uh, male herds. Let's head down to let's head right down here. Uh, so like solo male herds, you guys ask a lot, like if I've just got one male at a zone, like what do I do? And uh, that's a good question because as you guys probably know or you might not another way that you can delete zones is if you shoot every animal of a certain species that lives at that zone so if i've got a let's say a zone has two moose and i shoot both that zone is going to be deleted for moose okay and it's the same as if i delete a zone with hunting pressure right it's either going to come back in that same spot or it's going to repop somewhere else on the map and now i've got to go find it which is why you got to be so thorough with the moose, because a lot of the time you're going to have zones where it's just one male and you got to shoot those. There's no point leaving those, right? That's part of your grind. So like if I go to this zone right now and there's one male, I'm going to shoot that. And there's probably going to be, you know, I've got like 110 zones. There's probably going to be a good 10, 20 zones like that where I've got one male and I'm going to shoot it. And so that's either going to, you know, respawn in the same spot or that male is going to respawn somewhere on the map where it currently wasn't. So I've got to be uh, really thorough with my rotation. So with Moose on Medved, with this specific grind, I check everywhere, every rotation. Every time I go through, I'm checking every lake i'm checking every zone i'm checking every area because a lot of the time like i'll be running the north shore all of a sudden i've got a couple new uh moose zones with just one moose and that's the the respawn from something that i shot you know a solo moose at a zone that i shot the previous run the previous rotation so it's important to check everywhere you're gonna have new zones popping in and out of the map as you go because of those solo male zones that get deleted when you shoot that moose what about the females? Do we have to shoot the females? Do we have to work? A lot of the time I'll see in the streams, people be like, man, I got five zones uh, that have only uh, female moose. What do I do with these female moose? And the answer to that is simple. You don't have to worry about those zones. You don't have to shoot the females. Females will only respawn as females. So unless you're trying to spawn in like this, oh, uh, well, this is a good example right here. There we go. Perfect example of what we were just talking about. I spooked that female. That's another good example there. So I've got two zones here. Check it out, you guys. This is a solo female. This is a solo male. So this is a good example. So a solo female, I don't have to worry about that zone, right? Unless something changes, all of a sudden a male respawns there, which could happen. Um, that zone, I don't have to worry about. 
you're gonna have zones that have only females you're gonna have quite a few zones that only have females uh those zones you don't have to worry about at all just uh ignore them those females will only respawn as females i don't recommend shooting them during a grind only focus on the males shoot the males the males will respawn and hopefully one respawns as rare or a diamond or a super rare or a great one and that's all there is to grinding so this is a level two I'm just gonna shoot it, right? And it's gonna come back either in the same spot. This is gonna delete the zone when I shoot this. Okay. That's gonna delete that zone. And it's either gonna repop exactly where it is with another male, or it's gonna respawn somewhere else on the map. Now let's address the elephant in the room, you guys. So you guys have probably heard of herd management, right? You're probably asking yourselves, why isn't he talking about herd management? Why is it, why did he shoot that level two moose? Uh, you know, why isn't you know why is he why is he shooting the smaller moose? Why is he not only shooting the big ones? I tried herd management for a while, you guys. Herd management is a spawn manipulation technique. Uh, it is essentially an exploit that increases the the spawning of the bigger males on the map and uh, it takes a lot of hours to get your map to a place where it's uh, activated and, and, and it's actually taking effect but once you do you know implement herd management for long enough on your map you can basically turn it into a diamond factory uh, it will increase the spawn chances of the great ones super rares things like that I don't believe in it I tried it for a few months uh, it never felt right it felt a little bit dirty so I don't do it if you want to do it you totally can a lot of uh, people are doing it and grinding that way it's up to you but it's not something that i recommend i find it a lot more fun a lot more gratifying and fulfilling playing the game as it's intended grinding as intended as intended in the game and just shooting uh all the males okay shoot your males the way just the way that we always used to do it right you shoot the males every time you shoot a male on the map it has the small chance of respawning as something rare whether it be a diamond or a rare fur type or a super rare if you're really really lucky or a great one which is the uh you know the ultimate thing that we're looking for is the great one so I just shoot all the males. Uh, I find it more fun that way. If you guys want to do herd management, I'm not going to talk about it anymore uh, in this guide, but you can find guides online for herd management and uh, all the best to you. But we are going to pick up as many males as we can on this grind, you guys. We're not going to leave them. You don't have to pick them up okay in order for them to respawn as a new animal picking them up or not picking them up they will respawn as a new animal um, but i highly recommend picking these guys up pick up as many as you can otherwise you're gonna go broke pretty quick and uh, there is some speculation that it can affect your grind negatively if you're not picking them up so uh, it will be significantly faster not picking them up, right? If you're just shooting and then moving around to your zone, shoot, move to a new zone. It is faster, but like I said, you're going to run out of money pretty quick. Ammo is expensive. Time resets are expensive. And uh, yeah, highly recommend picking them up. But that's pretty much it, you guys. I think that's everything that I wanted to touch on. We talked about tents, right? 250 meters for your tents. Keep them away from your animals. Uh, keep your tripods 150 meters away, or your tree stands, or your blinds, or whatever you're using. Uh, we talked about weapons, your loadout. You guys should be good to go for a loadout for some kind of weapon. You got the options that we talked about. They are everywhere, you guys. Be thorough on your grinds. Come up with a rotation. You can do it the way that I do it if you want to, or you can do it however you want. Go north to south. Come up with the rotation remember how you're doing it and do it that way every time and uh yeah good luck on the grind you guys have fun and uh if there's anything else that i missed drop it in the comments join the discord if you haven't already get the hotspot map use that as a reference and i wish you guys the best luck if this helped you at all please do remember to drop a like it helps a lot i really appreciate it subscribe to the channel if you haven't already of course and as always i will see you guys in the next one